Hi everyone, Bert back again, High Altitude Scale Modeling. Today we're going to be looking at Edward's new F8 Crusader Limited Edition kit. Based on Hasegawa plastic. Got some resin, got some cartograph decals in it. You can do up to five different schemes. And the beauty of this is you can do five different schemes if you get five Hasegawa kits. Or four more Hasegawa kits, you still have these beautiful cartograph decals to make the rest. Kit number 1110. Comes with resin seats, wheels, photo edge, painting mask, cartograph decals. So, let's check it out. Sometimes these headboard boxes just don't want to cooperate. Ah, finally. Alright. What's in the box? We got some clear parts and some poly caps. We've got resin. We've got one bag with one, two, three, four sprues in it. Instructions. Cartograph decals. Photo edge. And mask. So. Uh, this must have come from Asagawa because it's not a normal Edward resealable bag. Where's my knife? Where it belongs. All right, let's pull her all out of here. Check the bag. Oh my God. There's an arm in the bag. The guy lost his arm. And it's got a big nub on it. That's why we never throw out bags. Because you never know whose arms are going to be floating around in there. All right. First sprue. Sprue A, conveniently enough, has the fuselage. Now, if you've seen the Edward kit of this, which I do have one or two. Not very many of them. It is very well detailed. Very nice. These are for the landing gears, landing gear bays. Okay, this, I'm not sure, but I think when they raise the wings up right here, right here, or wings come up to change the angle of attack, this part sits in there. But we'll check, intake, sidewall panel for, I'm guessing, front landing gear bay. I'm thinking part of the engine. Again, could be wrong. That's why we have instructions. Part there. So you can see. Recess panel line is good all the way around. I'm thinking that's part of the cockpit. But no sink marks. No damaged sprues. No ejector pin marks. Where the cockpit goes are, of course, in here. And as usual, run a sanding stick or a sanding sponge over them to make sure everything's flat when you test fit the parts. Here's the cockpit tub. Fairly well detailed. You can get a resin one if you want, but photo etch may come in here and replace all that anyway. We'll find out. So, not bad little cockpit tub. And it's got big glass on it, so you will see it. Next, let's grab the wings. A7 and A8. The A8 was differentiated because the wings could come up and down. I think it was a little bigger. I'm not an expert. But I only play one on TV. So, top wing, bottom of the top wing elevators. You can see the fine 
recessed panel lines. There's no real rivet detail except where these caps are. And I'm not sure if they're supposed to be. I do have a book on this kit. You've got deployable flaps. And this whole thing can be made raised up. So this will be painted red. Like when it's coming in for a landing. Same thing here. you got some ejection pin marks here where the pieces would go to glue together. Here. So I just make sure they're smooth. They feel smooth, but... A light rub with a sanding stick won't hurt anything. No sink marks. And there's some places to drill some parts out if you need to. Based on which version you're building. Wings, ailerons, control surfaces. <laughs> Wings, sorry. Flaps, ailerons, control surfaces. Ejector pin marks inside again. Smooth them out. Make sure they're good. So you get a nice tight fit. Doesn't feel bad. And it actually looks like they polished a couple of these themselves. All these, I don't know if you can tell, but they all look polished. But the detail, it's there. It's good. It's going to hold a wash well or panel line wash or black basing, whatever your preferred choice of detailing your kit is. Because remember, it's your kit. Just because I do it one way doesn't mean that's the right way for you. Here we got landing gear parts. Wheels. Uh, I don't see any weight on wheels. And... It's a little bit of burring on the sprue, which means there's going to be a little bit of burring... But not really, not much at all. Sorry, I didn't have you in the camera very well. But there's no real burring on the parts. And there's no flat spots on the wheels. But they're solid one-piece wheels. You're not going to use them anyway because it comes with resin wheels. I'm thinking this is the something the stabilizer underneath, probably. It's in one piece. Little antennas, shock absorbers. I'm not sure what that part is. Here's the instrument panel, which is probably replaced with photo etch, but it's nicely recessed. You could use it if you wanted. Very nice detailing on that. And, hey, there's little sprues, so there's more than I thought. Pylons, right? Maybe. The other wheel. Another one of those center fins for underneath. This is a pylon. Not sure what these are. But the detail on them is good. Still no flash. There's flash on these ejector pin parts here, but there's no flash on the parts. So, you can see that. There's a bit of flash on those ejector pin parts. But again, they're not going on your kit anyway. Missile rails for the wing tips. <clears throat> Being that this is an Exasagawa kit, I don't think there's any weapons. Here's a couple more of those parts that I don't know what they are. This sprue was cut off of something else. But apparently you need more of these. And these are pylons. Very nicely detailed pylons in there. They're one-piece pylons, too. You can see the nice curve in that one. Nice molding work for those pylons. Pull handles for ejector seats. I'm guessing front bay, landing gear bay doors, rear landing gear bay doors. Helmet with an oxygen mask. Pilot missing an arm. You're not going to use this ejection seat anyway, probably, because we have a resin one. But, again... Inside the gear bay doors, and those, these little ones might be ejector pin marks. They're very tiny. These are part of the, what should be there. And the inside of these doors don't have any ejector pin marks. And the inside of these doors, 
don't have any ejector pin marks. So that's cool. All right, let's check us out some resin. As you know, my last care review, the SC5, one of the resin guns barrels was broke off. Edward's sending me a new replacement one. Edward has very good customer service. All right, what we got? Wheels, hubs, ejector seat. It's probably part of the seat. So, as usual, Edward's detail is amazing. Spot on. Remove this big base, of course. Beautifully done. Seats cushion detailed. Headrest detail, the back. Top, front. And I'm not sure. I guess I am. This is the back part of the cushion for the seat. So you guys, what fits in that hole in the seat? It's probably left off. Because there's a certain way you have to do the seat belts. That would be my guess. Rear wheels. No name. Looks like a little bit of weight on wheels. Not a lot. Probably wouldn't be a lot, I'm not really sure. These hubs that have the brake parts in them go to the back of the wheel. And there's only two wheels, but there's four brake hubs. And they're numbered the same, so I'm not sure if they gave me an extra one by mistake or if there's a slight variation. Front wheel, same thing. Tiny little weight on wheel. Looks good, all one piece. So, usual nice Edward Brazen parts. Can't go wrong with good Edward Brazen. And let's grab Photo Edge. Yep, side consoles you can sand right off. Get those nice side consoles. Belts and harnesses, injector handles, other little doodads, mirrors for the canopy. Little piece of acetate in there for the heads up display. This side. Some parts for the outside, hatch covers, landing gear inside the landing gear. I'm guessing these go inside where you raise up the wings. This part here goes around the canopy. So two sheets of nice photo etch. Again, pilot's arm. And our masks. Nice canopy masks and wheel masks. Can't really see them. Yes, you can. This is a darn fine camera. Clear parts and poly caps. Uh-oh. Looks like one of the clear parts is broken off. That's never a good sign. How can I miss? Oh, there it is. I gotta clean my desk. So. Poly caps, poly caps, poly caps. Made in Japan, imported by Edward. And one detached canopy. It's scuffed, but it has no seam line. But it is scuffed. Front glass, beautiful. No seam line, no scuffing. Some lights, very tiny lights. Wingtip lights. Heads up display, but you know, it's a disappointing part of what it was all shoved in one bag. 
poly caps, either for the landing gear or for the weapons. I'm gonna leave this out and cover up that one piece before I put it back in the bag. I came with this to help from being scratched, but it didn't help. Cartograph decals. There's nothing to say that hasn't already been said about the quality of cartograph decals. These should be especially vibrant. Those 60s naval aircraft were all colorful. So, rainbow striping for the New Mexico version. Commander Attack Carrier Attack Wing 19. Red and white stars. Sorry, white stars, red background. Marines, VF-162, Yellow Stars, Blue Background, and the checkerboard pattern from VF-211. Stencils, stars and bars, if you want to use the instrument decals, some more stencil stuff for the interior, walkways, I'll probably paint. I'm not sure what this is, but it might be something for the canopy. Or something for walkways. Outstanding register, cut right to the decal. Not too thick, a little glossy as usual, but you know what? That can be matted down. I got him in there the first time this time. and instructions. It's all in English. So there's the description of the aircraft, the F-8E. Sprue maps, photo etch, masking parts, the blue you don't use for this version. Color call-outs, usual, aqueous, Mr. Cutler. Starting with the cockpit. Sorry, I needed a drink. Pilot's arm keeps getting in my way. Zoom in a little bit. Cockpit, instrument panel. Red means remove, blue means attach. Do not glue. That's one of the polycaps. So then where more of the PE parts go. Optional decal, because you're using PE instead. You can you know, trim a little piece of plastic for that handle. If you haven't worked with PE before, this is going to give you details exactly how to do it. It is hard when you start, but it's okay when once you get the hang of it, it's great. Like I said, I was right, this part goes in the top there, and then the PE goes in the front there. This is where the wings raise, poly caps right there. So that's got to all be for landing gear, since they're going underneath. Poly caps here are going to be for the elevators, unless the poly caps are for raising and lowering the wings. Need to remove some of that. More poly caps here on these attachment points. There's where that other part goes on the top part of the wing. So, get this one here. Then, you put the two piece slots halves together and all the internal parts. Then you put the landing gear on, which is a beautiful thing because you don't have to put it on until you're done painting. It's always a pain when you have to build a kit with the landing gear on, then mask it up and paint it. Jet nozzle, elevators, speed brake, photo etch seat with all the details. So you do put some PE over that cushion. That's why it's left off. Wiring, more PE, very detailed ejector seat. Some rails for the canopy, mirrors, 
that back panel I was talking about, more side panels for PE, canopy open at this angle, canopy closed, you do that, so when you open it you have to remove this part here. Heads up display with the acetate film, wings going on, center py or pylons on the wings so you have to drill those out if you put the pylons on, wings up, looks like that. So you'll need to put S5 in for the wings up and S17 because that's the hydraulic part. I do the wing up just because it looks interesting and it's got a red color so it adds to it. Decal would go on there as well. No weapons, but pylons. Actually, maybe these are weapons. They look like some type of rocket. Don't know what kind of. Placement of the masking. You'll have to, you just have to trim the edges of the masking for the canopy, then fill it in with liquid mask. Then your variants. Da Nang Air Base. Beautiful white with red, red with white stars, instead of the danger part right there. Then you've got this wonderful rainbow pattern from USS Ticonderoga. Black nose on both of them. Then you've got USS Oriskany. Not as colorful as the other ones, but same basic aircraft. This is the one with the blue stripes and the yellow stars. Checkerboard pattern on the Miramar. Sorry, from the Miramar, Naval Air Station Miramar. Black nose again. So, so far all these have black noses. Except this one. This one has a red nose. And it's called Satan's Kitties from the Ticonderoga. I like that one. I like the red nose. I like the diamond on the tail. It's not overblown. It's got the Commander of the Air Wing sticker there. Then you've got stencil data. Not an unusually large amount, but quite a few. Then stencil data for the top, plus some stencils that go on the seat and on the wheels. Oh, that's one thing you didn't check. Wheels. Is it different hubs or the same hubs? I just got an extra set. Wheels, wheels, wheels. Wheels. See, shows the flat spot. RP3. So it looks like they just gave us an extra set, which is fine. No worries, right there. So, this Spur review has come to an end. Another beautiful limited edition kit from Edward, except for this loose canopy that doesn't make me happy. Great box art, as always. So, if you like the FA Crusader, and it comes with the kits, this cost me $69 from Spur Others, I believe. Comes with the PE and the resin, so the normal Crusader kit, because it's Hasegawa, was in the $50 by itself. So, if you like the F8, go out and buy this kit. I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. And keep in mind, don't be a kit collector, be a kit builder. Go start or finish a build today. It'll make your day. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great day.